All right, we're doing it again. Third annual worst NBA contracts draft. I think two years ago, we tried to be nice and call it the regrettable contracts, but we're not going to be nice. What do we care? We're, we're just these, let's call it what it is. These are the worst. This is our crew. Big Waz is back. Joe House is here. Nobody has more experience with bad NBA contracts than Joe House. <laughs> You've lived it. How many years? 35 years of your life, bad contracts? Every single year, it seems like we might be out from under it. And then there's a new, brand new arrival, a new candidate, a new signing. And it just keeps on coming. It's it's in perpetuity here <laughs> in the nation's capital. <laughs> By the Was. way, Bill, these, these contracts are signed... Generations of these guys' families will be able to enjoy this money. Um, I think it's okay if we call them bad contracts because these guys are overpaid. I think it's okay. Yeah, and that's an important thing to say at the top. We are not talking about these people as people. Yeah. We are only talking about them as assets on an NBA team and what they're worth and whether a franchise decided they were worth more than they're paying the person. And that's where we are right now, where we have guys that might be worth 10 million. And for some reason, they're getting 30 a year. They're guys that maybe should have a $40 million four-year deal. And for some reason, it's 120. And we're going to point out all those. What we do, we do a draft. Uh, Waz has gone first the last two years in a row. House always passes up the sandwich pick, even though he loves sandwiches. So you're going to go second. Then I'm going to go third and then have the first pick back. Um, so we do snake fashion. Do you guys remember who the first picks were in 2022 and 2023? Do you I remember mean, Bradley, who you picked was. Yeah, let's hear what I say. Uh, I would assume it was either Bradley Bill or Ben Simmons. No one no. myself. You went off the board quickly. You blew House's mind. You took Davis Burton. You did it. Number oh, one pick. <laughs> And how furious! How how thought he was getting them, <laughs> and uh, everyone thought. I think you were going Westbrook last year. Here was here was what what the order was. Ben Simmons went first. Okay. Bradley Beal second. Duncan Robinson was our third pick, and that's the thing about the worst contracts draft. Sometimes it lights a little flame under somebody. Sometimes they play yeah. themselves out of the draft. Duncan Robinson, a valuable guy for Miami this year. So kudos to him. Davis Duncan Bertans Robinson was sport. playing so bad, Bill, that they pulled his podcast from him. They said, <laughs> you, you can't even podcast anymore. You're playing so bad. Well, he's back. Bertans <laughs> was fourth. And then Rudy Gobert was our fifth pick. Another guy who's not going to be drafted probably nope. today. Uh, Towns, Collins, Young, Jordan Poole was ninth, and Evan Fournier was our 10th pick. So a couple of things for the listeners. If somebody's on an expiring contract, makes them less valuable. That doesn't mean Waz isn't going to take Clay Thompson at some <laughs> point, even though he's got three months left out of his deal. He still might take them, but uh, that expiring deal makes them a little less, a uh, little less gamey for us. And then the other thing I just want to mention the top house, less bad contracts, like less long, bad mm -hmm. ones than we used to have. And it's just, I think because the terms are shorter the athletes are more willing to bet on themselves. Like, didn't you notice there's just less? Yeah, I, I felt like, you know, one of the wrinkles that we're going to try and incorporate, there might be some speculation coming into the upcoming free agent season. As I look down the list of guys that are going to be free agents, I was like, you know what? I, I don't really see any of these guys as candidates for gross overpays. Uh, and you we mean ex except LeBron James? <laughs> well, except, you know, that, that's a, a matter of debate. A matter 40, of 42 debate. year old LeBron James making $60 million a year. Maybe it won't be a gross overpay, Waz. I don't know. Where, do you think LeBron comes up in this draft? I mean, just so the listeners know, we have added an addendum in the sense of anticipating guys who are going to get deals that end up looking ridiculous this upcoming summer, which is only. Man, that's only like four months from now, right? So four months from now, there's some guys that are in line for some pretty cool raises for them and the, their families that might look nasty the second after the ink dries on that. Well, we can only guess, but we can guess that Pascal Siakam is going to get a max or close to a max. Yeah. We can guess that OG Ananobi is going to get a max or close to a max. Yes. We can guess that LeBron is getting at least a hundred million for the next two years combined. Probably. 
Something probably, that range. Um, yeah, I, he's angling for a third year. Uh, we'll see if he gets it. You know, that Las Vegas franchise isn't going to pay for itself. So he's definitely angling for a third year. But yeah, Le- LeBron is in line. Uh, yeah, you already said Siakam. Those James are the big Harden. ones. Harden's going Harden's gonna to get paid. Oh, shit. I forgot about get Harden. Paid. Yeah, Bomber's <laughs> definitely paying him. He's he's gonna All get right, paid. All right, so James Harden's extension is on the board. If anyone oh, wants to yeah. take that, wow. all right, let's go. Absolutely. Worst contracts draft. Let's do it. Waz, lead us off. Who do you have? So this one, it was definitely a little bit of. I had to fight with myself about what the pick would be because there are guys who are have more money left on their deal, but are quality. You could say players at their position. Mm. Um, and so while they're a bit underwater on the contract, meaning they're probably getting paid 10, 15 million more than they should. Um, and they're going to have that over the course of the next two to three seasons. <laughs> House is already laughing. excited. That. <laughs> but then there are guys who are complete <laughs> zeros Yeah, when they don't play. And when they do, they're negative. Mm. Um, and that's why my first pick is Ben Simmons, who's owed Woo! $40 million. That's a relief. Oh, I was so next worried. Next year. Next year, Ben Simmons is going to get $40 million. And the reason why I didn't pick him over guys like Levine or Beal or some of these other guys who are going to quickly come off the board, the Nets are trying to be good right now. Yeah, because they don't have their pick. They actually needed Ben Simmons. And they're paying him $40 million this year and $40 million next to not play. And when he does play... He's effectively a backup center, guys. They're paying a backup center forty million dollars next year. Seventy-eight million this year and next year. He was the second pick in last year's draft house. <laughs> How so last year we did a whole thing about bad contract or sad contract. Right. <laughs> Where Lonzo nice Ball. Lonzo was Ball, like, Lonzo Ball yeah. bad contract, but also like a sad contract. Like yeah. it's not his fault. Yeah. How is Ben Simmons a bad contract or a sad contract for you? It, it's both. And honestly, it's it's wonderful that we are doing this draft uh, on the same day that it's reported that Ben Simmons had his uh, uh, surgery on his back for the second time in three years. The news uh, came out today. Ben Simmons has played in 57 games since the Nets acquired him during the 2021 2020 no, further. He's two played season. In- 57 games since the Hawks series in 2021. Sure, fine. Which was three years ago. And he missed games due to his mental health uh, issue, apparently, which is a funny way of saying, I don't want to play basketball unless uh, you trade me. And Mm. he's missed games because he allegedly hurt himself trying to get himself into shape for the season, whenever it was that he decided to to return to professional basketball. This is a dude who just doesn't want to play. He's he changed agencies. He doesn't want to play basketball. He could take that $40 million that he's going to get next year, the last time he will ever get anything like that in terms of money, and go back to Australia. I don't know how they feel about him there. Could he mm. join? Could he be a, a like a, you know, get on the national team in Australia, play for them? Is that a path to rehabilitation? He can't play in the NBA. He doesn't want to play in the NBA. And so, honestly, we're going to be bidding him a bon voyage, I believe, yeah. fellas. This is, this is the end of the, the line for Ben Simmons because his deal will be finally, mercifully, uh, for the Brooklyn Nets expiring next year. And the Simmons thing is so crazy because it took another bizarre turn last week or maybe a week and a half ago when his agent came out and said, guys, it's my fault Ben Simmons isn't playing. Yeah. I didn't do the due diligence of finding the right doctors and getting second and third opinions. And like, I've never, I've, I've never heard of this In my life, a guy's agent came out and is taking the bullets because Ben Simmons' treatment wasn't taken seriously enough. Mm. Baffling. Well, (laughs) I I figured Ben was going to be one of our top two picks and actually did some some research trying to figure out 
was there an exact moment that this went sideways? Because Doc had said on one of my pods, he was like, that Atlanta series, when they started fouling him, and I saw it in his eyes, and he was never the same after they did that. So I actually went back, and I was like, is that true? In the 2021 Washington series house, if you remember, Russell Westbrook. My guy. Pulled your D. You, you My guy. One of, one of Russ's last fans. So you're, you're down 3 nothing in game four in Washington. And they start doing hack of Ben. Trying to get back in the game. They end up, they're up two with like, you can go watch it on YouTube. They're up two with like two plus minutes left. And they intentionally foul Ben Simmons after he gets a rebound. And I think he makes one and misses the other. But so now the seed's planted. Um, he averaged in that Washington series in five games, 15, 10, and nine. He almost averaged a triple-double. Mm -hmm. You go to the Atlanta series, that drops to six, seven, and nine. And the key game was that game five that Doc mentioned. Philly's up, they're up 51-31 in the first half. They're up like 26 in the second half, and Atlanta comes back and wins. But one of the things that happens, second quarter, Philly's up 20, Atlanta starts fouling Ben Simmons, and he misses seven of his next eight free throws. And he's never the same. So it's like, I, I'm sure physically there's some issues. I think stress has some some stuff to do with back issues, which I, I've personally experienced. But he finished that last three games of the Atlanta series, six, seven, and nine, seven for 20 from free throws. And then for the rest of his career since, he's made zero threes, 31 for 72 from the charity stripe. So his last 92 free throws, he's made 38 was. 38 for 92, making, you know, high 30s. To me, this, there might be stuff going on with him physically, but to me, this is like, this is a, men, this is like Chuck Knobloch. We're yeah. going in that direction with this. Ricky this is Q. somebody that got the yips. Yeah, this is yeah. somebody that something happened to them and they couldn't get it back. And maybe he didn't want to put in the work. Maybe physically he wasn't feeling the same, but um, this is like a sports documentary at this point, House. Well, and, and, I think this could be the end. Like the, the yeah. last, the final chapter is this upcoming season. Who knows whether or not he's able to rehabilitate himself after this back surgery and, and show up. I mean, the Nets are, are saying, well, we expect him back for a, a full season, you know, best of luck. And it is very curious to me, the observation made at the outset, as we were talking about this pick, the Brooklyn Nets are trying to, win right now and, and, and kind of really need somebody like believe? him yeah they need yes. like a rebounder defender they don't own their pick futures like Goes they have Houston. picks out they have a bunch of swaps out they don't own their destiny as far as picks are concerned and so they want to put as quality high quality of roster out there as possible yeah. at all times and there is 40 million dollars burning a hole through their books uh, it's just a cautionary tale. Man. Well, it was. Um, this is why they dumped their whole front office. Because when you get this bent, oh no, the, wait, all those guys no, still have Sean jobs. Marks, yeah, he's, he's got yeah, some. I forgot. He's got some still level. There. He got some compromise on um, Joe's side that we haven't heard about, man. Well, we we liked Ben Simmons as an asset when he was holding out with Philly, even though there was buzz that he was in London, that he wasn't even working on his game, that he didn't really care about playing basketball. And I was still like, that, that's still an asset. Like if I'm, if I'm another team looking to cash in on somebody, I would still think about that. Even last year with Portland, with Dame, I was like, you know, and if I'm Portland and it's just two years of Ben Simmons, roll the dice, the roll the dice era with Ben Simmons is now over. Mm -hmm. And that's it. You're right. He might be in Australia in two years. All right. House, you have the second pick. Who do you got? Woo! I'm so happy. This was so nice of Waz. The, the lead in that he he teed up <laughs> is so perfect for this player. This guy, I, I I literally have never seen a player with this much talent who is so disconnected to the 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 uh, any of the elements of winning basketball. And of course, I'm talking about Jordan Poole. I, I, he, he is literally the dumbest basketball player in terms of the talent that he possesses I've ever seen, ever, in my entire life of, as a fan of professional basketball. Our good buddy, Tom Haberstroh, I feel like he did this for me uh, in the middle of, of February 
did a breakdown. So Jordan Poole's in the first year of his four year, one hundred twenty six million dollar contract that gold. Yeah, we State, should we should have mentioned that sooner. Four years, one hundred twenty six million. And this is year one. <laughs> Three yeah, years, one hundred million, basically left on the deal after this year. Oof. So this is a guy who uh, has the most turnovers without an assist in clutch time for <laughs> any guard, going all the way back to nineteen ninety six, ninety seven. Wait, he doesn't have an assist in crunch time. No clutch time assist. Zero. No, no clutch assist. Time assist. How's that possible? Well, somewhere along the way, he's here, the point guard. Well, the team, the teams, you know, finally decided to bring him a- off the bench. Uh, he oh, leads all goodness. players in the NBA with the most fouls beyond the three point arc. The worst kind of foul that you can commit. Jordan Poole leads all players in that. He is number one uh, amongst all guards in the NBA in travels. He has the worst shooting percentage among all players with at least 150 attempts on pull-up three-pointers. Take mm. a guess at what his shooting percentage is for for, for, for dribble-up, pull-up three-pointers. He's underwater. He's definitely under 30. I would, I say, would say like 28%. 27.3 as of, you know, It feels worse for, when you're watching yeah. them on a small TV <laughs> in your house. And I honestly don't know what the path out of this is. I can't I can't come up with it's a true conundrum. It's a it's a it's a challenge that I'm not up for. How does he get better? What fixes him? I, well, I, I honestly know, a couple of my wife's friends, I not even close friends, but extended friends, like microdosing is in now. I wonder mm. maybe they should just try microdosing with him. It seems like it calms <laughs> moods, it mellows people out. Like maybe we're at the microdosing level with Jordan Poole. So brain chemistry, we want to alter yeah, his brain maybe, chemistry. Maybe it'll have him have an assist in the last three minutes. I was looking it, at the stats about just like, th- these are more simple than the stats you came up with, but he's, for anyone who's played over 25 minutes a game, he's 173rd out of 179 players in net rating. He's minus mm-hmm. 11. He's shooting 32% from three, but he's taking 6.8 three pointers a game. And in the last two years, only two players have averaged seven three-pointers a game, but shot under 33%. Jordan Poole, and can you guess who the other one is? So seven threes a game, under 33%. Russell Westbrook. No. Good guess. It's <laughs> it's Jalen Green. Oh, wow. <laughs> of, of course it is. That's Who's his, probably going to be in the Wizards in two years. Like, don't rule it out. Um the the conundrum here for me is just how good he was in the last couple of finals games and how worst case scenario he looked like Lou Williams, Jamal Crawford. Yeah. You know, that that was gonna be his destiny. The like instant offense off the bench, good three point shooter, a lot of confidence, really smart decision making. Um look he looked curry light a little bit. And and I mean that as a positive. There he could do like a curry impression for them. And from the moment he got punched by Draymond, it went away, and we haven't seen it since. And I, best, I don't know what happened. In the best of times, Jordan Poole was a negative on defense, literally one of the worst high minutes guards in the league by every single metric, eye test, you name it, yeah. teammate eye rolls, whatever metric you want to use. Um, he was leading the league and being horrible at defense at guard, and he's supposed to be an all offensive player. And yeah, I think he's at a, above a 25% usage on the season or about there, which is damn high, right? Like that's like running the offense type of thing. And he's got a true shooting percentage at about 51. Um, he might even be hovering around the 50s by the time of this recording. And so negative on defense and now high minutes, high usage, not neutral, not like uh, kind of decent. He's horrible. On offense now. Do you have stats on eye rolls? Did Second Spectrum keep track of that? How many times no, somebody just, to the just left Green their body? Podcast every now and again, and House. hear him defend the punch. House, can you? Yeah, wait, Draymond. Eh, that, that was a lose lose, literally for everyone involved. There, there are no winners whatsoever. House, what's it like to watch him week to week when a player who clearly cannot get out of a funk? to the point that 
it, it's almost like watching. We've seen this happen in other sports, right? This happens in baseball where like the closer just can't throw a strike anymore. We've seen it in football where the quarterback, it happened to Mac Jones this year. Like he just literally lost his confidence and became unplayable for a team that needed a quarterback. What's it like to watch an NBA player go through this? The the problem I have is I'm not sure it's a funk. I oh, think boy. this is who he is. And, oh, no. you know, I, I don't think he belongs in the NBA, to be honest with wow. you. I, I, well, oh, this is goodness. the challenge, right? If you, if you, what, what is the thing that he does that helps the team with, with winning? What, what, but we've seen him do it set? though. So the, it's the thing is we've seen it. Surrounded it by State. three Hall of Famers. He was surrounded right. by three Hall of Famers with, with discreet minutes. I do wonder if somewhere early on, if you wanted to be a person that subscribed to the Golden State, uh, you know, light years ahead the thesis that they dubs culture, that they overpaid him, that they understood how limited he, he ultimately was going to be. And they zagged. They said, you know what? What if we gave him this enormous contract to make the rest of the league think that there is some value associated oh, with this dude? Interesting. Because he is a sunk cost. He's absolutely a sunk cost uh, in terms of, of actual I, winning basketball. I know that they really thought he had a chance to be like a special piece of a bunch of good teams over the course of the decade. I don't, I don't think they know what happened. But I will say this, I, I'm still rooting for him and I always feel bad for him. And I thought he got a really raw deal with that, with the Draymond incident. And um, he did, and he did handle it with a lot of grace. Honestly. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, anytime he's talked about it in public, he's been really freaking gracious and could have been a lot more pissed off about it publicly, throwing people under the bus and stuff like that. He's been really at gracious this point, Maybe about that's it. what he should do. Maybe he, maybe he needs to, that's how he gets his mojo back is he should lob some grenades. All right, we're going to take a break. I can't believe the second guy on my board is still available and I'm going to take him right after this. <laughs> All right, coming back, I have the third and fourth picks in the worst contracts draft, and I'm going to take somebody who was number two on my board ahead of Ben Simmons. Zach Levine, <laughs> four years, including this year, left $198 million, plus has a 15% trade kicker if he gets traded. Right now, he is the seventh biggest contract value in the entire league, which would go up with the trade kicker. Um, he's hurt. He's had at least one knee surgery. Did he have two knee surgeries or one? I can't remember. He had at least one torn ACL, but now he's got this foot thing. Um, he was available for a month and nobody wanted to trade for him except LeBron. Um, <laughs> which, by the way, is a fact. In um, clutch we trust. So here's what really strikes me, fellas, with Zach. And this is like, because somebody's going to try to talk themselves into him this summer for 198 million minus whatever was this year. He is, this was his 10th year in the, in the league. Do you guys realize that? that he was in the 2015 draft. Was how many playoff games do you think he's played in? Total number of playoff games. What would your guess be? Well, I guess he was this on is the year Jimmy, 10 of Zach he was, he was part of the Jimmy Butler deal. They got Jimmy to Minnesota. Yeah. So he wasn't on that Minnesota team. Bulls only made the play-in. So, so he's not made the playoffs. isn't going to guess. He's just going <laughs> to talk it out. He's trying to do zero, zero playoffs. Zero playoffs. No, it's four playoff games. Oh, total I was going to say Zach. five. Mm. I was going to say five. Mm. All right. So I had to look this up. And you basketball reference. I'm a subscriber to Stathead because I like looking up weird shit. How many guys have played <laughs> the first 10 years of their career and played less than five playoff games? Well, you can get answers for that. How many of those guys also made an all-star team and played less than five playoff games and played 10 years in the league? It's him and Maurice Stokes. Those are the only wow. two. Maurice Stokes, which is one of the saddest NBA stories ever because he had like an annual... This guy was basically Elgin Baylor before Elgin Baylor got hurt and they had the Maurice Stokes Award and it's, you know, he's a beloved NBA figure. He's the only other one in the history of the league that this happened to. If you expand it to five playoff games or less... The great Steve Francis 
enters the equation <laughs> as the third guy. Um, House, this is pretty dire. And this is a guy that you've looked at for the Wizards for the last four or five years as like 30% kind of wanted him and 70% knew it and badly. Definitely not interested. Definitely not. No, I mean, I mean, he's, this is a guy who's going to, this contract's going to run its course and there will be a reset of, you know, what, what he can get in the marketplace. And well, he'll be 34 at that point, 33. Is it going to be half of what he's getting right now? Is it no. going to be, is it, is it 20, this no, is the not last, even 25 million, right? This is the last one. Yeah. Was, have we now with the, after the Bradley Beal deal where it's like, Oh, you got to give them the mat. You got to protect the asset. You can't lose yeah. the asset. And in, a year later, they have Jordan Poole for the Bradley and a bunch of, they have 40 second round picks in Jordan Poole because they protected the asset. Same for the, <laughs> same for the Bulls. The Bulls, I right, got to protect yeah. the asset. You can't let Zach Levine leave. Well, now you're stuck with Zach Levine. Is this era now over? Are we going to see a team just be like, you know what? Fuck that. I don't even want to protect the asset. Good luck. Godspeed. Yeah, I think because of the structure of the salary cap, teams often just get capped into doing it, meaning there's no way to even get replacement level talent in the building. You just you're just literally fielding a way worse team at that point. But at the same time, man, I, I wonder what the Bulls specifically what they might do when faced with this, because if people remember Zach Levine was in the press complaining because he thought the Bulls might not play him. I'll pay him. Right. And I remember Windhorse had put something out and Chicago had been putting out for a while. Like, look, why would we pay a guy who can't get us in the playoffs? Yeah. He's never done it. And then what are we, the Wizards? <laughs> and, then ultimately, <laughs> and then ultimately they did it. They pulled the trigger on it. And yeah, it's been quite regretful. The fact that so many teams want to add, you know, the idea of what Zach Levine brings to the table. He just languished there and nobody uh, pulled the trigger. And then also that first. So you guys remember him and Billy Donovan got into it. Yeah. So there was all this stuff in the press. Him and Billy Donovan hated each other. And let me tell you, it wasn't just Billy Donovan. The guys on the team, that first time he left the team and they took off, the guys on the team were sick of Zach Levine. So it's like coaches, players, like everybody's off of this guy. And then teams around the league were like, eh, I'm good. Even Rob Palenka was disciplined enough not to do something like this. That's crazy. Yeah, so Levine gets hurt this year. Kobe White gets more minutes and the Bulls immediately look way better. Revelation. And, you know, are at least a frisky playing team. House, anything to add about Zach Levine before I go to my fourth pick? No. I, I mean, we, we we said it all. Good luck to him um, for the rest of his career. It might not be very long. Top three for Zach Levine. Tough beat for him. All right. Well, I also have the fourth pick. I feel semi-bad doing this. <laughs> but then I then I thought about how I lost my 2022 title, Banner 18, for the Celtics because really Steph Curry in game four and Jordan Poole coming off the bench in the last three games. But really it was Andrew Wiggins turning into the second best player of the series Oof. and becoming this amazing two-way guy, tapping in all the potential he had, leading to him getting a, a pretty nice extension, four years, $109 million. Last year he disappeared for a long time. Don't want to speculate on whatever. We, we've all... We've all been like, eh, I don't know what happened, but feel bad for him. I have an idea and, then, and it wasn't warranted. And this year, <laughs> he did it again and was just gone for two weeks. So this is two years in a row where he just left the team. Um, but I'm just going to do production. He's down to 12.6 points a game and four rebounds. And his three-point shooting is in the 35% range. And the reason this is the number four pick for me is I think he's almost impossible to trade. Who is who is like, oh, cool, I can get Andrew Wiggins. I just, at this point, he's going to hit his 30s. There's been some erratic stuff the last couple of years. People aren't sure about the motor to begin with. Um, and if he leaves that Golden State infrastructure, what am I getting? And I just think I was looking at everybody else on my list and I, I, I would, he would give me the most hesitation house. It's like, oh, Andrew Wiggins for that? I don't know. The problem with him is what evidence... Is there setting aside the title six run? Months. Six months in 2022. We'll always have those six months. That's right. it. 
that the he tantalizing that he wants, six months that he wants to play NBA basketball that he likes playing yeah. it. That's it. Yeah, those six. It months. was like the six months before Kyle's wedding when he like wasn't smoking, he wasn't going out. <laughs> yeah. The same thing. He Andrew Wiggins us. <laughs> like, look at this guy. <laughs> he's changed his life around. <laughs> he's uh, he's an adult now. Kyle, he's all grown up. He's throwing a wedding for himself. Um, yeah, I don't know why. Is, where where's Wiggins a year from now? What team? Still going. That's to a eight? great question. That I I mean, I, I, he's not so bad. I feel like yet that he can't even be salary dumped. But when he signed that deal, everybody was like, "Man, he should have held out for more." Everybody thought it was right. a steal for what he got. And what we all forgot is that Glenn Taylor gave him a max rookie extension on a freaking promise that he would try yeah. hard. That was a thing Glenn Taylor said in public. He said, I talked to Andrew and he told me he was going to work himself into being worthy of the contract I just fashioned on him. That's a thing that happened. Such an so, underrated, awful owner, Glenn Taylor. Yeah. Like, it really, it was just a disaster. He's so low profile. <laughs> he did some of the dumbest um, shit ever. Cause, and well, you know why, Bill? Because a lot of times work, bad owners are associated with meddling. With Glenn Taylor, it's the opposite. It's apathy. It's yeah, like, apathy and like, hey, this David Kahn seems like a good guy. Maybe yeah, I'll make him the GM. Whatever, keep it. You know, the one thing I'll say with Wiggins' house is that by all accounts, like really well-liked teammate. Okay. And yeah. you could feel it in the 2022 playoffs when he was doing well. They were all the Warriors and Steve Kerr and the coaching staff, they were all, they called him Wigs. Yeah, they were just we so happy that it. he was having a moment. Right. Which makes me think like, could this come back? But I just, for that price, I don't know who's taking... Like when Dallas didn't want to take a gamble on it and went for PJ Washington instead, right? They could have just probably flipped Grant Williams and a pick and a Wiggins if they wanted, or even just Grant Williams and something. But I, I just don't feel like anyone was was looking at Wiggins. Um, House, you're up, number five. Well, I I can't let a top five of of worst contracts in the NBA go by. <laughs> uh, without including Bradley Beal. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> let, 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 it's right there. This is a good he's, one. he's 30 years old. He's in the second year of his five-year $251 million deal. Uh, the final season of that contract is a player option for fifty-seven point one million. He's, he just said he just said yes. I'm going to exercise <laughs> that. Like, yeah. Can we bet on that future? Is that a future we can get FanDuel to write some odds for us? By the way, that's the second biggest contract value in the entire league right now. Well, it, contract, yes. Value, no. Uh, mm. He's played 36 out of 65 games. And, you know, when you when you look up his stat line, it says Bradley Beal, nursing hamstring is what it says. He's he's averaging 18 point, 18.6 points per game. Now, look, this, the stat line for him this season in the 36 out of 65 games that he's played to date, not bad. He's shooting almost 50% from the field, uh, just 49.7. Uh, and he's uh, up on his career average from three thirty seven point seven percent. I gotta say, I like the way he's been playing for them. Yeah, he just he's doesn't well. know his play. It'd he's be playing nice well. to know if he was playing, but yeah, I think he's fit in really nicely with them. M me too. Good, good asset when when he plays. But he's being paid as if he's Shade Gilgis Alexander. Yeah, <laughs> but he's a glorified third banana. I mean, come on, it, it's a terrible contract. And then you forgot the last part. Um, house, which is my favorite part about the Bradley Bill contract, he has a no trade. <laughs> so even did that, if you tried, now did that move with him? Did it go from? Did yes, it carry? I think you get to no bring it. Carries? Yeah, it's like yes, BD. You just get did. to bring it to the next stop. So even if you find a, a a place that's crazy enough, sicko enough, you know, to love Brad Bill so much as to try to trade for him and give you value for the guy, uh, he could veto the deal. It's 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 the gift that keeps on giving the Brad Bill contract. One of my favorite Bradley Beal stats is he hasn't played 60 games in a season since the 2018-19 campaign when Kawhi was on Toronto and Kevin Durant was on the Warriors. It was five oh. fucking years ago. He's played 60 games? I do like the way he fits with Booker and Durant, though. Hey, House and I talked. Yeah. Uh, and I know House did a thing on the East Coast Bias, as always, like you guys stole stuff that I brought up in the thread. At least you gave me credit this time. I did. What are you, you talking credit. about? It's fine. <laughs> um, but I was saying that Phoenix, I, the more I stare at the West and the more I stare at Denver and how unbeatable they are, especially in the last five minutes, just nobody's beating them. 
So unless you, if you, you have to be up 10 on them with five minutes left and that's how you beat them in a playoff series. But the, the only way to beat them is just to outscore them. Literally. Like you have to, that they're going to score on their end. So you just have to score at least one more point than them on your end. And Phoenix might be the only team in the West that can, can do that was where they could just be like, all right, you're definitely scoring, but we're definitely scoring too. And that's how to beat them. I don't see another recipe for beating Denver. I, I, I'm of the mind that you kind of got to, I'd like to see somebody build a jumbo package against them. Um, if guys will remember the last time this team lost at full strength was with the Lakers who Dwight Howard still had Just something big boy them. Yeah. In, the ta- in the tank. Well, Minnesota AD. has the people to do that. You know, uh, like they, I think you got to have a jumbo package available. I actually think Rudy does pretty decently um, against Jokic when they face up with each other. Not that he's mm. like killing him or anything, but it's, you know, he plays pretty well against the guy. But outside of a jumbo package, I don't think the outscoring thing is going to work. I don't think uh, anything's going to work. But yeah, maybe it's, it's, it's maybe Durant and Booker getting hot four times in a series and they win three of those. And then Beal has the one rando game when he has like six threes. I just, just can't imagine that you know, the Nuggets are losing though. four times to a team because of Bradley Beal. That just no. The, the no, Nuggets aren't losing to, to anybody. Team. They, they yeah, somebody's yeah. going to have to get injured for that for it to be yeah. realistic. I am intrigued by what was just shared because that is the way that Phoenix beat them um, last week. They played Nurkic and Eubanks fifty three minutes, and both mm. those guys fouled out of the game. And what right. they got, what that got them to, <laughs> was overtime. But then they won in <laughs> overtime. They yeah. they did outscore Denver in the overtime. Um, so it did that. that Durant innovation. made a three. Beal made a couple big plays. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we'll see with Bradley Beal. All right. Waz. I mean, this is where the board drops. If we're doing the NFL yeah. draft, this is like a swing yeah, pick right yeah, here. This could go in a lot tier. of directions right now. And you got we're two in, in a row. Tier. So what do you got? <sighs> Man, I got to go back to Chicago. And mm. one Nicola Vucci main Vucci oh, wow. Vucevic. Because I don't think people realize how badly this guy's thinking up the joint um this year at this point. So just so folks know, he's got about like 66 million left for three years. After this season, 41 and a half million bucks, which is a bit for two years, yeah. For two years. Uh, that's what you pay a starting quality above average center in this. Is that league. what you pay a guy who gets replaced by Andre Drummond at crunch time? Once it's a week? insane. His defense has <laughs> gotten worse, obviously, over the years with right. age. And his offense won because he's got the sort of cultural veteran cachet. Guys feel a need to give him the rock yeah. so he could, quote unquote, go to work on killing his team. And now he's taking threes at volume and he's at like 28%. And so it's very reminiscent of what happened to house and pick up basketball near the end of his career. No, near the end, <laughs> near the end, guys still felt like, he, Oh, it's house. We got it. We'll feed him at the top, but you, you know, it wasn't there just, in the same way. Just a black hole. <laughs> I still got but him yeah, up. It, it, he's, he's so bad. And the bulls are so anonymous at this point that people don't notice, but that extension they gave him has been a killer. Yeah, who, and who is he even a backup against center at this point? Who, who was the, uh, other person in there, like we also are at sixty six for three for Vucevic. I think I think it was the we loved Lonzo. We loved what we had when Lonzo and you know Caruso and all these guys were cooking. Oh, during the two weeks when Lonzo and right. Caruso and we right. had so everybody. Right. Yeah. I think they fell so in love sad. with that and felt like Vooch was a big part of it and it it was mm. justifiable, but clearly. And then you know they they gave up a bunch, bunch of picks to bring him in just. Terrible, terrible transaction. That I really want, I'm ready for Vooch to move into the next phase of his career. The Mark Gasol late two th- 2010s, an eighth man on a good team where he comes in and every, you're not relying on him, but every once in a while, it's like, oh my God, he, who's Vooch had 12 points in that quarter. And that's kind of where he is now. But unfortunately, he's the starting center on a team making 22 million a year. Um, House, any last Vooch thoughts other than the obvious Wizards trade that's going to happen with him? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, they're not going to do that. I okay. can't imagine. All right. Waz, what's your other pick? So I think it's time to get just slightly spicier. Uh-oh. I've been waiting. Here. And I, I'm still not a fan of the Carl Towns deal. Okay. <laughs> I'm still not a fan Fair. Yeah. Of a guy who is a center, and I get it. He made the all-star team. 
He's a quality offensive player. Well, say what the deal is. Five years, I think it's about two hundred and sixty million, two fifty seven. Two hundred and fifty seven million for this year and the next four. Two fifty seven. So over the five seven. Yes. Over the next four years after this one, there will be two hundred and twenty million dollars left on Carl Towns. Deal. And at least okay. one of the years starts with a six. After this year. And this is a guy who is a center who you had to go trade for someone who you're now paying $45 million to do what? Play center. Okay? Called to, because of Carl Towns' game, Minnesota is paying $120 million a year in centers. Okay? They were um, number number one in the West for like 60 of the days of the season so far. Look, it they, they not have Ed Edwards, so all isn't lost. And again, Carl Towns is a quality player. It's not like he's some unplayable whatever player. He is not a $50 million NBA player. He's just not. Um, and House, so, I, yeah. had him, I had him lower on the list, but... Um, I, I did too, only because I think we got a little bit of validation of what Minnesota was after in sure. terms of bringing in Gobert. There, we did see them be able to function t together, yes. and his versatility still, I think, makes him a little bit of, of an asset. But I, I was, I'm not arguing with the point. I, I mean, yeah, you know, I listen. He was going to get drafted. I just, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> was, I, 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 was grabbing him at seven was a little like when the Pacers took Walker eighth last year. It was like, whoa, he's going now. Okay, um, yeah, now it's. I mean, he. It, I did notice that he went out and Nas Reed immediately went into his spot and had like 34 points and looked really good. 20 million a year for Nas Reed, center. <laughs> so here was, here's why I didn't have him in the top 10. Because mm. I think if they shopped in this summer, I think, I think teams would pay for him. Like, I think sure. the Knicks would pay for him. I think there's some teams out there that are like, oh, Towns is on board. Will you take this back plus some picks? Like, whereas I just don't think Beal has a market. Yeah. Beal's market was basically somebody buying the Suns and just being like, ah, let's make the finals. I don't care about picks. I don't care about the second apron. Let's get some players. It, that, he was it. He was the only guy bidding. So with Towns, I do feel like there's a couple teams that would, like if, for instance, Oklahoma City, that's, that's a guy that they should be thinking about if he ever became available because... You could, he fits what they do. They like all those perimeter people. They have a million picks. I don't know if they care about the money as much. Um, any other Carl Anthony Towns? This is like the nicest we've ever treated him in the worst contract strap. <laughs> hey, listen, I, look, I, I thought Rudy should have got his spot at All-Star, honestly, because they're a dominant defense, and it's because of Rudy Gobert. Uh, I, I just, I don't know. That Carl Towns thing seems in, absurd to me. Although, again... To be fair, what he's done on defense this year deserves he deserves credit for that. Eight years or whatever we are into the Carl Towns experience, he's decided that defense is a thing that matters and serious teams actually perform at um, serious players. But yeah, that 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 deal looks absurd to me. Every time I look at that number, I'm just like blown away that Carl Towns got that. Was this might be one of those picks when you look back at this draft in June? after Towns falls apart in the playoff series and be like, <laughs> whoa, on, great man. value Come at on, seven. <laughs> Come on, man. That was a top four pick. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a perfect segue and setup into my next pick because mm. I can absolutely tell you a player and a team that would gladly take Carl Anthony Towns, and that is the Atlanta Hawks in exchange mm. for Trey Young. Uh, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised that Trey Young made it this far in, in this draft. We still... Wiles well, took him day. last year, like 10 spots early. Well, I, I think he's in the, exactly the right spot right here at, at the, what is it, number eight or number nine in this draft? Yeah, number um, eight. He, he is, uh, it was a five-year, $215 million deal. This is their, we need a name for this class of like overpaying. It's 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 your Zach Levine, your Bradley Beal, your Trey Young. I, I don't know if I want to put uh, KAT into this, but there is this, so it's like it's not a it's not a max deal. It's like a it's the first it's his first rookie max extension, right? So Towns is on his second one. 
Right. And so that's why his is so much so more. So first max. Right. This is Goes his first up. max. And so that's why for me, it's like he's still a borderline all-star, which means he is close to like a $35 million player. Like he is. He is so he, I, I, I don't see it as, in, in terms of production, in terms of leadership and that kind of mm, Well, it depends. Let's define production. What is his role on a team, you know, setting aside, and I, I'm going to, you know, recognize what I'm doing here, um, what he did with that Atlanta team in the Eastern Conference playoffs, you know, a couple of years ago, can he ever do that again? I, this contract is based on that performance. Well, you need Ben Simmons on the other team. You need Joel Embiid to gack two free throws at the end of a game. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that has to go your way. I think the thing with Trey Young, the potential of what he is, you could even see it. Like House and I were fascinated by the, the betting for this season, where the Hawks at one point after 60 games were 22 games under 500 covering the spread. I, what was yeah. their record? They were like 19 and 41 against the spread. Historically over again, bad. Despite all evidence that the Hawks were bad, week after week, gamblers were like, this is the week. Here they go. I was watching highlights the other day. <laughs> Trey Young looked amazing. And then guess what? They'd fucking lose again. <laughs> and they just lost. And Vegas is just setting the line perfectly. And all these idiots like us are like, this is the week for the Hawks. They were... I like nailed most of my over unders and I had a bunch when I was in Boston, I did a bunch of like future parlays. And I, of course I put the fucking Hawks in like four of them where I have, where I'm going to hit six of the seven win over unders. And then there's the Hawks who are going to be 10 wins lower. I just wonder if that's Trey's destiny that they'll be dining off this 2021 playoffs for the rest of his career where we're like, well, that one time remember that. And it's just, you know, maybe it was a fluke. Maybe Philly should have beaten them in five. And then we would be talking about it the way we should be talking about it, which is like he is a good stats, bad team player until until we have further evidence that he's not. And, and Waz, I yeah. mean, you care about the Hawks the most out of the three of us. You probably watch the Hawks the most. Yeah. What evidence is there that he's more than a good stats, bad team guy? I, look, I think what he does is elite. His passing is elite. Um, and under the right circumstances, he can be pretty elite at scoring as well. I think the problem with that is is the route that he takes to these stats is very alienating to teammates. And Trey Young being a guy who's always going to need teammates to pick him up defensively. So the proposition that he's making to his teammates now and in the future is watch me take all the shots, hog the ball, pass it when I feel like, take 40 footers on a whim and then lift me up on defense. Who's signing right. up for that? Right. <laughs> like, it's, it's just, it, it's just an insane proposition. It's a very junior situation of the LeBron situation. LeBron's earned all the accolades with this, but when you're on LeBron's team, if you win, LeBron gets all the credit. And if you lose, it's your fault. Yeah. And Terrible if you're on team. Atlanta, Trey gets the credit. If anything good happens, I think this is part, part of the Murray thing. It's always interesting when Trey doesn't play what happens with Murray in those games. He's, he's like, unlocked. finally, fi he's <laughs> like, finally, I get to take dad's car out of the garage. Uh, I thought it was a whiff early for Trey Young, but House, I also, I respect that you, you're a man of principles and you stick to your guns and it was a, a very predictable pick. I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take a break and then do my two in a row. All right, coming back. I have two picks. Honestly, I'm stunned, guys. I'm stunned that he's still available at the ninth pick. I thought for sure he was going. It's one of the last two. DeAndre Ayton. Yes. <laughs> I'm waving the white flag. I'm not defending him anymore. I'm done. Oh. I just can't do it anymore. DeAndre, it's not you. It's me. It's not you. It's me. I just need some space. <laughs> I can't defend you anymore, but it's, but you're great. I had a great time riding for you and mentioned the 2021 finals and how, you know, you were able to kind of guard Giannis sort of, and you know, mm -hmm. you got a bad deal in Phoenix and you got blamed for everything. And if you could just 
end up on the right team, it'd be, I'm done. Can't do it. Three years, 102 million left. After, and that's this year and the, and the next two. He's 15 and 11. Like he's proven, he's like the guy's house that I grew up with. These centers that can get, they can get 18 and 11. They can get 15 and 10. Um, and they don't really seem like they're always trying. Minus 6.7 net. I thought he was in a great situation in this Portland team. Rob Williams goes down. He gets to be the starting center. And it's like, all right, prove it to us. Show us Phoenix made a mistake. And he kind of did the opposite, Was You can go, I want to say, 10, 12, 13 possessions at a time without even noticing this man is on the court. Okay, on both ends. It's insane how bad this guy has been this year to me. And again, this is relative to the deal. Uh, He gets paid like an upper echelon starting center in the NBA. He is nowhere close to that. He's just, and again, he's not a negative. So, you know, he's not Jordan Poole range where he's actively hurting his team every single minute that he's on the floor. But my God, the dominant. It's just too much. Yeah, it's too much money allocated to for the this level of production. Like, would you rather have Luke Cornett for $2 million a year or DeAndre Ayton for 30? Sign me up for Cornett. Thank you. I don't know if you've seen him lately, but. He might be a $30 million a year guy the way it's going for Luke Cornett. So it's, <laughs> Good rim protection. House, you tried to talk yourself into Aiton with the Wizards a bunch of times. Has that I, just sailed? I thought there was a possibility that, that was he was going to be part of the, the Bradley Beal thing um, because it was apparent, it seemed that Phoenix um, was thinking about moving on from him. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm all good with, with, the, with Mr. Aiton. Well, maybe... Maybe Portland signs Buddy Heald this summer, get a little Bahamas reunion. Maybe that'll get him going. I, I just like, if it didn't happen this year with no Rob Williams, I, I don't know if it ever happens. All right. So eight and one pick. I'm going to admit defeat on him. I have two guys on my board. One is like an underrated drive-by and then the other one is super spicy. <laughs> and I think I can get the super spicy guy in, in a couple picks. I'm going to go with Keldon Johnson. <laughs> really? Probably weren't expecting him in the top 10. He's four a million years, darling. <clears throat> four years, 74 million. Uh, yet another guy when everyone, when we have to talk about how smart the Spurs are, even though there's been real, really no evidence since 2017 <laughs> that they're either smarter or dumber than anyone else. Like, literally, there's none. Nobody can they come up with any evidence. They got the number one pick. What are you talking about? Yeah, they, they, they stumbled the, into the next generational talent. They're uh, geniuses. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, you know, if you just go through the moves, not great, but they gave Keldon Johnson this extension and he's dropped from 22 points to 16 points a game, 33% three point field goal the last two years. He's got the worst net rating on the Spurs, minus 8.5. And I test wise, I'm like, fucking A, man. Like, Wemby needs better teammates. And one of the guys you look at right away is like, I wish Keldon Johnson was better. So you go from your 22 point a game score on a really bad team to now that you have a good teammate, it should make you better. And it just doesn't feel like it has. So uh, I don't know who would be excited to trade for that contract house. Um, Sure. Except for it's not that much money is the thing. It's, it's like it's, 18, it's a, 19 it's a, million. It's 20 I million know. this year and it goes backwards. But that's See, fungible. See, so to me, the reason why I don't like your pick, Bill, is because there's a guy on his team. Zach Collins, I mean, good lord! What does he can't play him? with when he's he's got thirty four million two years after this one? Okay, so yeah, like Zach he, Collins, he didn't make my draft list. He has yes, thirty four million. Collins, what the hell? Thirty four million over the next <laughs> two seasons after this one. Can't play with Wemby. Obviously, can't man lineups without him. Um, and they just paid him blindly for just like on no, blind he's, faith he's that he would 22. be a guy. Oh no, they got it. He got an extension. Jesus. Yes. Yes. Two year, 34 million <laughs> extension next two years yes. after this one. But they he's only at 7.7 7 this year. Yes. Two years, 34 million in the next two years. He's just been wiped out of the rotation, wiped out of existence. That, he does nothing. Is that your next pick? Team. Oh no, you're no, not no. up. It's, well, yeah. no, because I because I got I gotta go spicy my next few. Oh pages. no, you're not. Oh, up I yet. can't wait. I like it when we when <laughs> now, I, now, now, I, now I regret not going spicier, but yeah, I just 
the, I wanted to lash out against the Spurs because the Wemby thing makes me so mad. That's, Just, that's why we're here you to pick you up, Can you put a fucking better Bill? team around Wemby? I say it every podcast. House, you're up. Um, well, I, I'm kind of surprised with the DeAndre Ayton pick. Um, because why? the combination of his age and the duration of the contract, there is still an out. That out doesn't exist with his teammate, Jeremy Grant, who is in the first year of a five-year, $160 million deal. Yeah, This guy is making $27.5 million this year, oh, $29.8 next year, 32, and he's, he's, he's 30 years old. So, I mean... Yeah, that part's not great. Congratulations to Jeremy Grant, by the way. Tremendous job. Like... Turning himself deals into in two yeah. great deals. Yeah, he's like the new Kirk Cousins. He really is. <laughs> he, that's a great call. So I, a- I int- house, I had him in my top ten, and then I went and looked at his stats this year because I, 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 from watching Portland, I was like, yeah, Jeremy Grant's pretty good, and his, yep. he's averaging twenty one a game and shooting thirty eight percent from three. Like he's yep. a good player. He is for he's sure. He's just too overpaid. And the, and Portland's atrocious, and it makes no sense at all for them to 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 have they they have sixty million dollars combined going to DeAndre Ayton and, and Jeremy Grant, and they have these the the kids who really should be getting that this run. Um, you know, they have to find out what they got with Scoot. Uh, Simon's still still you know salvageable. Um, Shaden Sharp's l- legit. Uh, I don't know. I mean, if it's a go along to get along contract it just feels like that's what it is and it feels expensive to me he could be a very valuable player in a different kind of circumstance altogether but i don't know what he's doing on portland at that price the reason he wasn't up on my list is that i think the second this season's over they'll be getting calls on him again and they'll be able to extract value out of um his deal again and so like they just punted on it this this uh this past trade deadline because they're like people are gonna want this guy because like you said he's right. shooting thirty eight percent although I do think I think he's a little bit overrated like I do think that but I think his perception because he plays a premium position because he's got great size and he's making his threes um I I think people will still call them for him and he will he will draw some some damn some interest this summer again. So that's why he was low for me. Although again, I do think he's a bit overrated in that way. I like house. I thought you made the key point about where he is the last two years of that deal when he's in his mid thirties and maybe not as exciting to pay 34 year old Jeremy Grant, 32 million. So house spot and low. All right. Waz, you're on the clock with two. Kawhi Leonard just oh, left was, the freaking Clippers game. Wow. With back spasms. So now we're adding back spasms mm. to a gimpy meniscus and ACL. I mean, the, the the injuries just never stop piling up for this guy. And yes, obviously when he plays, he's a borderline MVP candidate, but he never plays. And he's going to make $50 million three years preceding this. Um, That is... Ooh, that is a scary proposition. So to me, I'm making that bet that he's just not going to be on the court. And so that is four, expensive. Four years this year plus the next three. He's making 45.6 this year. And then a new extension kicks in from Uncle Steve. <laughs> Uncle Steve's like, I got a new arena. <laughs> Who wants some money? And he gave Kawhi three years, $149.65 million house. Yeah. I'm not, I, I mean, what would you say for when you throw in Kawhi's history and the curse of the Clippers? What is the over under for Kawhi games in the three year extension? If you had to bet, oh, if I said amazing. it at one, I'm going to set it at 140 games. Would you go over or under? Way under. That's a that's an outrageous number. 140. Would you go under, Wes? He has to play 141 regular three, season games next year. Including years. this year? No, next year. No, no, next, the next year. The three years. The I'm going years. under. That's 50. That's 50 a season, right? No. Yeah. Under. Under, 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 under. Way under. So that all right. So and I'd count the postseason in that too. So, so that's basically you're saying season. he's gonna make more than a million a game. <laughs> I oh, yeah. He's got in the postseason. Absolutely. <laughs> well, the funny thing is we do the ringer 100 voting, and and I think I had Kawhi's as the sixth best player in the league. 
Yeah. That, that I just makes wouldn't sense. want to pay him $200 million. Yeah, right. I'd want it's to pay him reasonable. by the season. He just doesn't play. He doesn't play. He he's doesn't a liability play. that way. He doesn't play. But if he's healthy come these playoffs and, and you know, uh, Harden and, and he George just left are healthy. The game. He just left the game and went to the hospital with yeah, back it, spasms. It, it's a regular season. It's the regular it's season. It's not great. Okay. It, it, it wasn't they got, great. They got drugs for that. Okay. Waz, what's your other pick? CJ McCollum. I oh, mean, fair. He's just he's just got such a great <laughs> reputation that. in the media. He's a media member himself. Like yeah. nobody would ever come after CJ McCollum because he's such a positive, well liked, so polished, and all of that. I don't fall for it. It's a bad deal. <laughs> um, the guy can't guard anybody. He's not a point guard. He's not a, like a a setup guy, set the table type of guy. Thankfully, he's shooting threes at volume for the first time in his career. Really, like he's always been like a sort of mid-range darling. Um, but guess what? He's the third sort of setup guy on this team. Doesn't guard people, and all he does is spot up. Essentially, uh, he's overpaid. Two more years at thirty-two million a pop after this year. So sixty-four million after this year. If you count this year, one hundred million dollars. To, so CJ McCollin could be a glorified microwave dude. I, th- I think that's absurd. Overpaid as hell. Bad contract. CJ McCollum rounds out my roster. That was my favorite was pick of the draft. He's <laughs> <laughs> not falling for CJ McCollum. I'm not falling for this media, media glad handing. I'm not going to fall for it. I'm too impartial. House, what, what are your additional thoughts, House? <laughs> I mean, he, st- he was staring me right at the face. Uh, it was, it's right. He's getting paid for something that doesn't have to do with going out and, and playing basketball and helping his team win basketball games. I like him, but sometimes this happens where what's weird is they double down on it. He was pretty pricey when they got him. And then they're like, hey, how about two more years? Um, feels like the 25 range is the right range for him. And he's he's above that. All right, House, who do you have? I have a, I ask a, a technical question because I, I have a combo, but I don't know. This would be the first time in the history of the worst contract thing. What this is really uh, uh, amounts to is an indictment of one particular team, but I don't want to, I could just say one of the players and you would understand who the other side of the, of the coin is. I'll do it however you, the podfather uh, dictates, but I'm asking for permission for a combo pick here. Because I don't right, think so you, one you'd of these have guys. to forfeit next round's pick, but I'll, okay. I'll allow it because I, I don't like think you're this. gonna. Well I done. don't think you're gonna take any of my snake picks. I don't think so either. Uh, I'm looking at DeAndre Hunter and John Collins and wondering what in the hell was Atlanta doing two years ago? What in God? Did, did John Collins is is on now in the third year of a five year, hundred twenty five million dollar deal. Yeah. And, and and DeAndre Hunter still has uh you know four years eighty million dollars uh I, I I believe I have him and for four for ninety this is 90, year one 90. of his extension yeah yeah four. right so three years after this and it's ninety million total for the four years this is how you create teams that 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 can't possibly find their way to success this gross overpaying <laughs> role players. The, 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 these guys, what, what contribution does John <laughs> Collins make to a winning basketball team? Now, the curious thing, both these guys are 26 years old. The knock well, on Hunter. John Collins, three for 78.6, by the way, including this year. That's what's so left. So he's at that's 20, what's left. 26 million a year for this year and next year. Yeah. Um, and, and Hunter had, you know, garnered this reputation of being a, a defensive ace, except for he can't play. And when he does play, he doesn't play very good defense. So <laughs> yeah. I, I'm happy to use both of my picks right now on this uh, disastrous Atlanta tandem. And and this is three picks in a row for me with Atlanta. And honestly, it might be the only franchise that 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 gives me hope with my Washington franchise because of, of like, they really do rival Washington in terms of grossly overpaying role players f- third and fourth not even really third, fourth and fifth bananas on teams that, that yeah, actually I'm, have aspirations for winning. I'm glad you're blaming Atlanta for the contract, even though it's now on Utah. It's telling that when they traded him to Utah, Utah was like, here's our offer. Nothing. Right. <laughs> they did the Michael Corleone. Yeah. <laughs> here's my <laughs> offer. Zero. 
<laughs> we'll just take the contract and give you a bag of balls back. Uh, the Collins thing's interesting because I do like his game, but yeah, I if the three point shooting was in the forties. Yeah, it never came back around, honestly. He broke the hand, and it never came back around. And I feel bad because I've been a John Collins apologist for about four years, and I thought the Utah thing would finally be able to turn it around. But it turns out he's just a nice little low-end starter. He was definitely on my board because yeah. he gets paid like a sort of premium power forward type. And Utah, he gets plenty of opportunities, plays around plenty of space. Like they got a creative offense and it just hasn't worked out. It's just, he's not worth the deal that he's on. It's just a fact. There's no two ways about it. DeAndre Hunter's not a starter. He's not a guy. <laughs> he's not just a guy. not. And, 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 you know, and he got his deal at a time where everybody was just like, oh, the way the cap is spiking and blah, blah, blah. Like, you can never overpay for a little role player, 3 and D, wing guy. It doesn't matter if he can't dribble or shoot or pass. It's all good. It's going to work out. And, and and it just didn't. Um, and, yeah, I think I think I think Hunter is a way worse value on his contract than um, than John Collins It's only because I can see John Collins getting meaningful minutes for like a real team. Hunter's. Hunter's at least hitting threes this year. He was not last year. Um, we're going to take one more break. And when we come back, I am bringing the Momofuku Spice. <laughs> and we are about to give give this podcast a shocker. Chili Next. Crunch! <laughs> All right, for my next two picks, I dedicate both of these picks to Gilbang. Curb your enthusiasm. What was it? Episode three or four? The shocker. <laughs> Gil Bang was on the porn set all day. And you know what? His equipment wasn't totally working. And then uh, somebody had an idea to put a little Tabasco in his ass. And it turned out it wasn't the actress he was working with. It was the cameraman. Uh, and he told a whole story. And Larry's wife was horrified. And this was the first great Curb Your Enthusiasm episode. And House and I revere Gil Bang. Gil Bang. I'm Gil Banging both of these picks. First off, LaMelo Ball, welcome to Ooh. the draft. Yeah. Sheesh. I mean, honestly, for the love of God, LaMelo Ball, $10 million this year. His extension hasn't even kicked in yet. Five years, $204.5 million starting next year for yeah. LaMelo Ball, who's played 58 games last year and this year, who every time I watch the Hornets, he's just in street clothes, smiling. As they're down 20, um, I have no idea if he could be even the second best player in a good team. Um, from a culture standpoint, we've now had a whole presidential term with him, and I don't see it. I know the talent is there, but this feels like somebody who's going to break some hearts along the way where it's like, oh, man, he's so talented. Oh, did you see he had a 36, 15, and 10 last night? And I don't see it. I don't like where it's gone, Was. And LaMelo Ball is my first pick. Yeah, I mean, the, the, I feel you. He's somebody I thought about myself. The, the the talent is obviously there. He's obviously still super young. Um, I don't think he's plateaued in terms of, of output when he's actually played. Uh, he's shooting threes at pretty nice volume, 36%. Like, you can't be mad at that. That's not, you know, scintillating, but it's like, okay, this is respectable. He's always had the core vision, always had the size. Let's get those positives out the way. He does not play. He is highly unserious, um, is not a defensive player yet, even with all of the size and yet. the alleged I don't know basketball if, I don't know if the IQ. Yet I think the yet is going to be standing for the next 10 right. years. And like, there's just no proof that a guy like who never played, this guy does, he's got to get on the court. And when he's on the court, he has to be a serious person. Like I, I know it's like some of this stuff is, is very cosmetic. It's like, Oh, he's not moping on the bench. Well, sometimes you should mope. Your team stinks and you're never on the floor. Stop showing up the games and goofing around. You know what I mean? Like I, I get it. Um, it, it, this is a scary, scary, scary situation. Good thing they Listen, got Brandon maybe, Miller. Listen, maybe this segment will be a PSA for him. LaMelo Ball, we all think you're talented. What we don't want is 10 years from now on whatever Twitter ends up being in 2034 is the 90-second montage of some idiot going, LaMelo Ball is a problem. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and it's these LaMelo Ball highlights. You're like, oh, man, LaMelo Ball is really good. 
your destiny can't be the 90 second Twitter montage yeah. of that you were a problem when you didn't <laughs> fucking make the playoffs ever. So get your shit together, Lamella Ball. What do you have to add, House? I feel the exact same way. Stop the clowny pants. I mean, this is the thing. Is is there, uh, you know, I'm not going to bes besmirch the family, but we have a problem with getting the balls on the basketball court. That That is now a documented fact. So Man, we all we all loved Lonzo, and I to and, me that was like I don't know what happened with his knee, but I we've at least seen moments from Lonzo where it's like this guy is a winning player who has real value and adds something to good teams, and Lamelo just seems like a guy who's a good stats bad team guy, and he's not doesn't seem like a culture guy, no. at least not yet. But he's no. young, maybe there's a chance, but. And again, know, just, just the opposite end of the spectrum with a young guy. And some of this stuff is structural for me in the sense that LaMelo Ball has accomplished practically nothing in the NBA. And he's already got he's if he does, if he doesn't lift a single finger again, he will have earned two hundred fifty million dollars. And at a certain point, it's like you can't tell me my career has panned out bad in that right. sense. So with, with with that being said, what's his incentive to turn into a serious player? Turn that to a Victor Wimbenyama, who I'm not going to lie, I was pretty skeptical, like he's going to come in here and kick everybody's ass. He's a dog. He's yelling at his teammates. He's playing hard. He's taking defense. He to, gives like, a he's shit. He's serious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is taking it so freaking serious. And that's what you want to see out of a young guy. Yeah, and we're not seeing it. So we all agree. Something's missing. Can't put my finger on it, but the way Waz just spelled out the Wimby thing, that's exactly how I feel. You either have that, I want to dominate and I want to kick ass and I want to be awesome and I want my team to be awesome, or you're just playing basketball to get stats and look get cool. commercials. Yeah, and look Add cool. Instagram followers. Maybe there's still time for LaMelo Ball. All right, my other pick. Also another Gil Banger. <laughs> This year and the next three, he's owed $207.3 million. He's going to be 37 years old, getting a paycheck that starts with a six for the year. He's good once a week. <laughs> Not positive, but his best years might be behind him. We're about to find out over the next three months. Every once in a while, he gets absolutely torched by somebody. I hope he doesn't make a diss track about me. Damian Lillard. <laughs> it's just too much money. And it's money that scares the fucking shit out of me if I'm the Bucks for three years from now. It's a terrifying number. The For what we're seeing now, and think like he's going to be three years older in three years and we're going to be paying 60 plus million? House, it just, it's, it's, it, it makes you gulp. I made this case on this show a year ago uh, with, you know, there, there was still only four, four years left, but it is, it's about his age at the end of this deal. Now, the thing that you better than, than me and Waz maybe have a perspective on what the next media deal might look like. So there could be a form of cap relief you know as you when they when when I teams like the i don't Bucks think it's going to be as in. exciting of a media deal as everybody seems to think okay all yeah. right but the we do think the cap will go up some amount right i think we'll still get those 10 percent raises i believe yeah. so yeah yeah so i that, don't think that, that creates a little bit of room well let me ask you this not enough if you're a network and you're like, all right, what am I paying for? The two most famous players in your league are 39 and 35. What's what's year seven of my deal looking like? A, I better really believe in Anthony Edwards and Jason Tatum and Wembenyama, who's a French guy. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Like, is so the the biggest player, the all the biggest players in your league are not going to be from America? Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Like Jokic uh, is the best player in the league and it's not close right now. And I feel like the the ringer probably spends the most time talking about him, but I, you know, I don't know if he's a national guy like LeBron and Curry. I don't think it's ever happening. I also don't think he gives a shit. But I don't know what I'm paying for if I'm the if I'm the networks. Why like why do I have to pay a 25% premium on where we were already? 
Well, I think maybe if you think you're a network and you're just better at selling this package of goods than the previous partners were, because let's face it, they haven't been always awesome at doing mm. that. <laughs> uh, don't want to say no names, uh, but maybe that's that's the play. It's like, yo, I think this is a depressed asset and I can do way better with this, what these guys have to sell than what, you know, the the, the current partners are doing. I, I think that's the only way to spin it when you look at, you know, some of the current um, numbers and trends, et cetera, et cetera. The problem is what Derek Thompson talked about on this podcast a couple of weeks ago is there's so many basketball fans who don't actually watch that much of the games, but they follow the league religiously on yeah. social media. And like and my YouTube. son, my son knows everything Wembenyama is doing. I, I know for a fact he hasn't sat down and watched more than like five minutes of a Spurs game with me. So how do you sell that to networks? I think it's a, uh, I think it's a problem. Anyway, we'll see if the if the cap goes up, the Dame contract not that bad. I I just know House is terrified. You you want to get through another podcast of that a Dame lowered. Uh, this track or anything. <laughs> yeah. Any, any sort of, hey, well, you know, or, what? or an eye, eye emoji. If they make it to the, to the finals this year, the, the NBA finals this year, then it'll all be worth it. I mean, I, I think if I, if you yeah, put that this on the year table next, when they retool yeah. this summer, where they actually have the ability to, to add to the roster and not just be trotting out, like, you know, a joke of a wing rotation. I, I think, mm. This year and next will be the window. And I think Dame has been out of rhythm, out of sorts. He's definitely, obviously, clearly not having as good a season as he had last year. But yeah. I think he can bounce back. I think he's got it in him. Um, right. I'm not as down on Dame as you two guys are. But I, I, I understand the trepidation. I'm down I, at the 50-plus million a year. <laughs> yeah. It's just in general. like That number is terrifying no matter who the player is, unless it's like Jokic. Um, House, what's your next pick? Well, I used the combo, and you said I ha I have to skip. Oh so yeah, so Waz gonna... is up. Waz, yeah. who do you got? All right, we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. Yeah, we might we might have two more rounds in us, so that we'll go this round, next round, and we're and we're a wrap. And we could go faster. MPJ, too. MPJ for me. Still, yeah, he sure. looked good, good last Fine. night. Uh, listen, I, look, uh, I just think Jokic is. He 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 lifts all boats, man. Uh, this guy, it, it 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 just can't be overstated how much he elevates all the things that are around him. I think Jamal Murray's an amazing player. You know, I think he is extremely complimentary of what jo jo um, Jokic brings to the table. I don't think without Jokic, he'd be some world-beating, dominating one. I, I just, I don't. I, I think the world of the guy. And I think he's great for this team. He's extremely clutch. But I think because he gets to work off of Jokic, that thing looks beautiful. Hmm. Same with MPJ. Like, he's, he doesn't got any moves. He would never be any ball-dominant guy. He's not some prime Clay Thompson just deathly scaring everybody with what he's doing with movement shooting and shooting and all of that. And respect to him for becoming a plus defender, actually using his size and all of that. But, like, you think about the back. You think about the... It's only a matter of time before this guy's probably like, yo, man, I need more touches. Mm -hmm. I need to rock more. I'm just thinking in the future. So MPJ, I'm looking at that contract, and and yeah, I'm not I'm not too too crazy about it. So we got 115 million for this year and the next two, three years, 115 million counting this year. History of back issues, although he's been really healthy, and I I'll be the 170th person to make this point on a podcast this year. But he definitely is the X factor of that team. It seems like when he plays well, they're unbeatable. And they might be yeah. unbeatable anybody, but when he plays well, you're like, holy shit, now what now what yeah. happens? Uh and if you do that in playoff series twice per playoff series, you know, that's a win for him. House is just thinking about him ending up on the Wizards like three years from now. <laughs> He's the oh, perfect he, wizard. He, House likes MPJ. See, they, he does House doesn't want to say it, but you're kind of an MPJ guy. All right, Waz, what's your other pick? 
Just because I have to. Sabonis. I mean, come wow. on. Wow. I, I, I can't do this. <laughs> I'm right. I can't do this. Y'all not going to get me to buy this thing. I'm I'm never going to buy this thing. <laughs> the, the, the T-Rex arms at center, I'm never going to buy it. I get it. He's a focal point of what they're doing on offense. And he doesn't always embarrass himself on defense. And he plays hard. And he's a positive guy. But he's got four years, 186 left after this year. Okay. Uh, which mm. again, over two hundred million dollars. When you that count was an in Uncle this Vivek. Year. Uncle Vivek's like you've heard of Uncle Steve. Here's Uncle. <laughs> Come Vivek. on now, uh, for a six foot eight center, I, I just I can't. <laughs> Who doesn't shoot threes? It, it I just, can't be. He killed don't. Anthony Davis last night. Well, okay. I was like, I'm not Do it impressed. In the post That's all he does. Do it in the postseason. Yeah, Do it in the postseason. It's, it's fair. Fair I'm enough. not. I'm not buying this Sabonis thing. Y'all, y'all so, could buy it. I'm not. <laughs> so, but basically five years, 214 million for him. If you include this year, mm. I mean, we took a lot of heat, Simmons, when we, you and I were together looking at the lists of potential all stars, and, and we didn't know exactly what to do with Sabonis. The, the Light the Beam people came at us for not having, and he he does have this incredible double double streak going into the production. Season. You know, not only that, but it's production that matters. Like, you know, they they beat the Lakers' ass last night uh, because he he's, you know, he, he he's very uh, challenging to Anthony Davis. I guess my question is, and I know this kind of defeats the purpose of the worst contract draft, but every team kind of has to have at least one guy making over 40, right? Yeah. And kinda. probably two. You know, this is the situation the Lakers are in that Russell and I talked about, like, if you, you basically, every team has the spot and the guys are going to make between 40 and 50. And if you pick your two guys and they're making a combined 90 to a hundred, what are those two? What's the ceiling with those two guys? That's what everybody has to figure out. So if you're the Kings, you're like, all right, here's, we have Fox. Fox on a pretty good deal because he's under 40 because they signed it two years ago. And it's a bonus. So we're paying like 85 million maybe for those two together. What's our ceiling? And then you can talk yourself into what well, we had the number one offense last year. We're really fun to watch. He likes Got being in Sacramento. In the first round by Jordan Poole. I get it. Come on. The case, the case <laughs> for the contract is this guy actually likes being in Sacramento. Our yes. fans like him, yes. and our team's pretty good. With yes. all that said, it's too much money for Sabonis. I agree. It seems high. Does your ceiling high. is very low. Hmm. What's your other pick? No, those were the two. No, I made. Oh MPJ yeah, you did and MPJ and Sabonis. Yeah. So house yeah. is up. He did too. Um, I have a confession. Is this the last pick or the second to last pick? This is the second to last pick, but All right. we can help feed you if you. If you're well, no, no, picks. no. I just have a confession. There's a name on this list that I'm. I'm just staring at it, we'll and I do don't. It. I don't want to say it. I don't want do to say it. Do a Gil bang us. Give it to us. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to save it. I'll save it for the last pick. Um, this is low hanging fruit, it's staring us right in the face. Whatever Pascal Siakam's next deal is, it's going to be a gross, <laughs> grotesque overpay. It's going to be a preposterous. We're also certain that it's going to be a max. Does the, do the Pacers really have to do that? Do they? I really... don't know if it's going to be a max, but it's probably going to be like 40, 42 range. Oh, I think oh, it's going to be like years. 220 for five years, something oh. like that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, for what? The, the problem is they have um, a truly transcendent talent in Halley, right? And and so yeah. you have to surround him with complimentary pieces. And so far, you got to overpay like, for the piece. Yeah. But but is that the piece? That's the piece you're going to overpay for? He's, like he's your, you want him to be your third best guy. He can't be second. I would sign that deal and then immediately try and trade him for Carl Anthony Towns. That's what, a, if, oh, if I was going to do that deal, that's what I would try to do. And what I will say is that since Halliburton got hurt and he rushed back, he just hasn't been the same. Yeah. So I'm not going to judge the Siakam trade too harshly right now. Because Halliburton isn't at his best. And ultimately, Halliburton yeah, yeah. has to be at his best so we can see what it really looks like. For sure. But yeah, the Siakam deal is, it can be a little bit, it's kind of scary. Yeah, I will say, he to me, he is in the class with Julius Randle and Jalen Brown, where it's like, oh man, how much money is it? Oh, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. But when they're on your team, it's a nice guy to have on the team. They're, yeah. they're All three of those guys are are three of the 10 best forwards in the league. 
Yeah. And they play. They're durable. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know what you're getting. You watch Indiana at the end of games and it's like Siakam will make a really good play with 90 seconds left. Like he's been in big games. I I he like him. I just think play. he's too expensive. He, that's it. He's going to he's going to be too expensive. He will yeah. be on this list next year. He definitely knows how to play. And that that is a, a very good reason to have him on a team with with the youth that that Indianapolis has. I do wonder a tiny bit. It looks look to me like his athleticism is diminishing a, t- a tiny Ooh, bit. Yeah. I do think that. Watson, well, yeah, immediately. So that makes me feel better. All right. I so mean, I have two picks. Nine, like, <laughs> he's, he's on the other side of that hill. Yep. I have two picks left. The first one's easy. I'm offended that he hasn't gone yet. He's making, uh, for this year and the next three, four years, $94 million. And to me, it's like for what he does during a game, I can find 30 guys in the league who basically does this. It's Cam Johnson on the Brooklyn Nets. Mm. It's like, oh yeah, they traded Durant. They got Ma- they got uh, Mikel Bridges back. And they got Cam Johnson. They re-signed him to almost $100 million and he's going to blossom. Well, where's the blossom? He's he first of all he he's one of the few people who failed my Team USA theory. Usually when you play on Team USA you come back and you're better. <laughs> he's somehow worse. He's three points worse. Three point shooting's fine. He's a forty percent three point shooter, but that's really it. Doesn't really rebound. Doesn't really pass. Solid defender. He's a three and D guy. Why do I have to pay a three and D guy? 22 million, 23, 24 million dollars a year. I don't want to. No, thank you. It's the same conundrum you're in with DeAndre Hunter. It's like, cool, I'm getting all this stuff, but can I patch this together and find people and that I'm paying five million dollars a year for? So anyway, I'm a little dis I thought he'd be better this year and he's just not. So he's one of my picks. Cam Johnson he's- is is like a Tavon Austin type. Every time somebody thinks about him or brings him, oh, Tavon Austin, he he oh, like might Percy he could unlock some stuff. Oh, <laughs> yeah. such a <laughs> such a great piece, and, and it's so explosive. And it's like, bro, he's he's dropping forty in the spiked basketball era. You know, it's like the Brady Anderson fifty home run situation. Yeah, I, he, I, I'm, we're he, we're in the spike spike stats era, and the stats went down. Yeah, but but what I'm saying is, remember those games where he dropped 40 like three times in a row and it was like, oh, when Kyrie left the team at first, that's what got people really excited about this dude. But yeah, I've never saw it for him. House? He's the poster child of, are we really sure that Brooklyn's trying to win? I mean, it's, we had the conversation at the top. We, I understand the point about them not having Poor picks Jacques or Vaughan. anything, but <laughs> right, right. This guy, this is this is exactly why I asked the question. The Nets can lose to anybody. They've proven it time and time again. They'll lose to any team in the entire NBA on any given night. Uh, and and this guy at this salary is is part and parcel of it. There is no proof to me that this there, that's a serious team with serious intention of trying to win. Um, but good luck, good luck to him. Well. The good news is they haven't changed their front office in 10 years. Um, can I make a quick defense of Cam Johnson, even though I just picked him in the worst contract draft? Please. If Cam Johnson was here and was like, Cam, what happened this year? I think his response would be, my point guards were Spencer Dinwiddie, Cam Thomas, and Dennis Smith Jr. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> Give me a real fucking point guard. Maybe, maybe uh, you'd see your 20 points a game. Okay? Leave me alone. All right. My last pick. This is emotional. I'm sad it's over. I was really having a good time. Uh, There's some good ones left. But I got to go. This just is, it's been jumping out at me. I can't stop staring at it. This year in the next five, $262 million for Anthony Davis. (laughs) <laughs> who is 31 years old. It's not a bad pick. Who's been playing big minutes really since he got in the league, who hasn't exactly been Mr. Durability. No. And look, I don't mind the number this year. I don't mind it next year. I don't mind it the year after that. But now you're taking me into the rest of the 2020s. You're taking me into, he's going to be 35 years old, 36 yeah. years old, 
37 years old, making $60 million. Yeah. What is that going to look like? What, yeah. what is our evidence of big guys hitting like the year 14, 15, 16, 17 of their career and still being awesome? I thought it was a, a, a kind of perplexing extension. I didn't really understand it because they already had him under contract. And that's just a, that's a lot of money house. It, it is the, one of the curiosities of the way that, that the, the NBA contracts have to work. There is no mechanism by which you can reward a player. And it li literally is the thing that Washington, uh, you know, I'm very accustomed to this in seasons when a Poland owned the team <laughs> uh, years where guys had good seasons, they would come back and they would get like giant contract extensions without really any uh, modicum of, of what, what does this do to the cap? What's our team building thesis? It was, nope, we had a good season last season. Extensions for everybody. Uh, and so it's, it's because there is no way to, to truly compensate guys for, you know, uh, uh, resetting the direction of, of a team, resetting the trajectory of a franchise. I, I think Anthony Davis, by the way, I, with, house, I fucked ahead. up. I said, uh, I said six years, 256 million. It's five years, 256 million. So it's 83 million this year and, the, and next year. And then the extension that kicks in is three years. 177 million culminating with a player option in 27, 28 for $62.97 million. Anthony Davis has already picked that up. It's just a bonus. Yeah. He's, he got, they gave him a bonus. They gave him a bonus because he helped them be competitive. He, they, he was a running mate for LeBron. He made the Lakers relevant. They won uh, the, the, you know, the summer camp title um, in, in 2020. <laughs> so look that, you know, those are all meaningful things. I I'm fine with, with rewarding him. For that, but uh, right on the face of it, <laughs> I, I cannot wait for Waz's take because he's making a face. <laughs> no, I listen. I think AD, um, like you guys said, the reason he's at the back of this thing is because for the next three years he's going to justify whatever he's getting paid. But once he gets up in the years, when you count the injuries, and I think of a big man who's playing well into his mid to late thirties, which is Al Horford. But his game isn't so predicated on athleticism like AD's is. Al Horford is like spreading you out to three. AD can't shoot threes. Yeah. You know, AD is counting on catching lobs and, and you know, being really athletic on the perimeter on switches and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. I, that, that kind of stuff is going to be greatly diminished at the end of this deal. So I get it. But I'm an AD guy. So I'm a, I, 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 I'm, I, for me, he's second team all NBA this year. Yeah, because I'm going to still vote with positions. I think he's been the second best center in the league. And it's perplexing to me that he's been as good as he's been and the Lakers have been better. I'm just looking. We've followed the NBA too long and House and I are older than you was. But you, this these athletic, tall, big guys who can't shoot from deep. It goes Jermaine O'Neal. It was over all of a sudden. Yeah. And three different teams try to talk themselves into him after it was over and he went to like Miami and he went to Toronto and it was just like, when it's over, it's over. And I, I just think it's going to be abrupt with him because of what you're talking about with the athleticism. Um, he's not going to have a plan B. Horford was able to refashion himself mm -hmm. around a lot of the skills he had, but he also wasn't making $62 million in the yeah. final year of his deal. So, Although that last deal with, with, with uh, Elton Brand, that was... That was tough. Yeah, true. <laughs> true. They did have to attach a first round pick to trade it. Yeah. Um, all right. House, your last pick. Okay, so here's the name that I've been staring at. This is a confession, and I'm not going to select him out of respect and love for our beloved colleague, Chris Vernon. But John Morant at five Ooh. years, hundred ninety-seven million. Ooh. With the last, he was on my list. Months, I had him marked. The last 18 months of John Morant, boy, oh, there's a lot of uncertain, uncertainty. Now, it's, it's, it's everything because we want him to play in this league. The TV contracts that we're talking about, he yeah. should be asserting a himself as the yeah. best American player. One of our young like Americans. He should be in that. We should be, it should be him, John Morant, going head-to-head -head with Anthony Edwards, going head-to-head -head with Jason Tatum. And, and so, Zion. And Zion. And so Halliburton, we, let's get and some Devin Americans Booker. in the mix, yeah. baby. On, yeah. 
We just got to get every the past 18 months in the rearview mirror as quickly as possible. And so I right. am not going to sit here and, and cast his contract. It's a fair level of compensation. It's the same amount of money that Zion's making. I think it's fair. The extensions for both those guys after the, the rookie contracts. Zion did get uh, drafted last year. He did, but, I know, but in he, our, he, in our thing, yeah, he he deserved it because he he there was no proof that he could uh, play a full basketball season. Looks like a knock on wood. Like let's not jinx Zion. I want Zion in the playoffs. All I right, want so who's Pelicans your pick? The playoffs got to be Kyle Kuzma, and the reason is because <laughs> Kyle Kuzma <laughs> took an extension from the Washington terrible franchise, and uh, they they put him on the table as they told him. That, that he was going to be, and the de- they had a deal in principle with the Dallas Mavericks, and the de- he said that the team asked him, do you want to go to Dallas and play with Kyrie and Luka? And Kyle Kuzma said, nah, I'm good. This is great. I love it right here. Kyle Kuzma, Why would I leave here? He this said he the- wants to build something special in D.C. <laughs> with you guys. Come on now. He's, he's yeah. looking forward to <laughs> opening it's, it's up that new special. building. It's been a special year. That where, new where? building in Northern Virginia, he's excited to open that thing up, house. <laughs> it's the funniest <laughs> thing I ever heard. I love it so much. Do you want to go to Dallas and play with a team that's going to make a deep run potentially in the playoffs to play? Nah, I'm good. I'm good. I, I would love to spot. know the, the validity of that idea. I, I, I would imagine that the deal fell through and Kuzman was like, I know I was supposed to be traded, but I still like being here. because Can a I nice zag guy. on this? Because I've had a theory guy. on this. Let's hear it. Mm. Kuzma played with Porzingis last year. Yes, he did. Might have made a call, huh? Probably hung out, right, on the road a little bit. Hey, what was it like to play with Luca? Maybe you heard some stuff. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised. And by the way, guess who was pretty miserable playing in Dallas? Uh, Porzingis. And guess who immediately left Dallas and was good on Washington and now in Boston? Porzingis. Yeah. And I wonder if Kuzma's like, man, I already did that. I won a title doing that with LeBron. I don't need to win another title. I have a ring. I'll stay here and I get a lot of shots. Maybe Jordan Poole will be good again <laughs> in the 2020s. Uh, I, can, I can see it. Maybe he likes DC. Maybe he likes the DMV. House, you Maybe haven't left so. the DMV since we graduated college. I um I honestly have no problem at all with with Kuzma, and I think that contract is honestly fair. He's a good fourth player, fifth player, fifth player. Not a good expensive. fourth player. I think He's that's a good. I think that's a good Kuzma contract, especially yeah, just fair. before we get out of here. Obviously, just a couple of that I had up here that you guys didn't mention. Wait, Nurkic. you're up. You have the last pick. You oh, got to finish. Oh, it oh up. yeah, last you. Pick. Yeah, yeah. Kuzma, I don't four for ninety. Is second last pick. You're you're, you're it's wrapping not us up. Was for me. It's it's Tyler. It's Tyler Hero. It's Tyler Hero, uh, man. I'm glad he got <laughs> like, It's the Jordan Poole Good deal. Job. Essentially Good job. the exact it's same It's four deal. years, 120, right? Or four right, years, yeah, 126? Call. Three yeah. years, 99 mil at the end of this season. Uh, he just has not lived up to it. They went to the finals without him last year. It's like, it's tough. Um, he basically was part of the reason they couldn't get Dame in there because everybody thinks he stinks. He does shoot it still. You know, but he doesn't really do anything else. Uh, that's a tough, tough contract. Tyler Hero. Now you got Heat Nation against you. <laughs> now you have a weird <laughs> they don't know. coming at Waz. Do pundit, we really think that Ringer Heat Pundit Nation? takes slams Tyler Hero? That's going to be a headline now. Does Heat Nation stand by Tyler Hero? I don't think well, so. Well, they try to trade him. I don't think so either. Summer. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of on eBay. Feels like a lifetime. I think they've moved on to Jovic and Jaime Jaquez, who are legitimately good rookies Ballers. and legitimate pieces. Ballers. I agree. All right. So to recap, Ben Simmons was our first pick to Waz. House took Poole. <laughs> I took Levine and Wiggins. House took Beal. Waz took Vucevic and Towns. House took Trey. I took Aiton and Kelda Johnson. House took Jeremy Grant. Waz took Kawhi. And McCollum it started to get spicy right around here. <laughs> House asked to take two picks in a row and took Hunter and Collins together. I took LaMelo and Lillard with the Gil Bang same game parlay. My, Michael uh, Michael P. Jordan, a.k.a. Michael Porter Jr. I have MPJ down. I wrote it as MBJ for some reason. Michael Porter Jr. and Sabonis. 
wow, you got super spicy here in the second half of this draft. I didn't really fully yeah. realize it until I was looking at it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> House took the Siakam extension that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> I took Cam Johnson and Anthony Davis. Kyle Kuzma went to house and the last pick was Tyler here. I thought we have some apologies as always. We'd like to offer apologies. Bruce Brown, two years, 45 yeah. millions, making 20 million next year to be the ninth man on Toronto. Apologies. Kevin Herter, the red rocket three for 50.5. Uh, his stats dropped dramatically. I hope Sorry Priscilla doesn't hear that. Grant Williams, four for 53, made it 50 games with the team that signed him. He can't believe, he doesn't know what else he had to do to get Michael picked. Finley's taking snipes at him in the yeah, media. Michael, he's, there's drive-bys <laughs> on him every day. P.J. Tucker with the two for 22.6, taking the leave of absence and everybody be like, yeah. all right, tell us when you're going to come back. He didn't get picked. Uh, <laughs> Rob Williams, three for 37.2. Sorry to Rob. Sorry to Draymond Green, four for 100. Yeah. One more incident away from maybe just being suspended for the rest of the season. I'm not sure I'd want to be on the hook with that. And then last but not least, Davis Bertans. <laughs> $16 million this year and a $5.5 million buyout just to get out of his $17 million extension. So you got to pay five and a half just to get him out. Uh, but he did not get picked and it made me sad. This is the first oh. time we've done the draft without Bertans. Maybe next year somebody overpays him. Is that um, all right, before we go, we got to bring in Saruti. What's up, gentlemen? Saruti, who won the draft? Man, <laughs> was super spicy. I think I love the hero pick. The Sabonis thing was just, I especially after like, like triple doubles owning Anthony Davis. I It's going to be a tough one, but I, I'm willing to hear it as somebody who still thinks that trade is a disaster for the Kings. Um, so I, I got to side with Laws. Uh, you know, obviously House is a homer, so there's House is going to make the most homer picks of anybody. But I, I give the slight edge to Laws. Laws, congratulations! You oh, won the 2024 you. worst contract draft. I mean, he did have the first pick, but when you when you start out with Ben Simmons, it's, 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 it's your team is just loaded. Yeah, you start you out guys. Ben Simmons, Vucevic, Towns. Wow. 